Oh, thank you very much, Mr. John. Uh, welcome back, everybody, to Anderson's TV. Uh, our special Digital John presenter is with us today because we've got some Digital John thing Digital to tell you about. <laughs> it's important. Uh, boss, the daddy of effects pedals um, and, you know, one of the leaders in what you can do with multi effects and stuff like that. It's not often that they come out with a new toy, no. uh, but 2022, uh, beginning of 2022, we heard that uh, the GX100 was coming. And GX100 is going to sit in between GT1000 and GT Core and ye old fashioned GT100. So sitting at about 500 quid, GX100 is coming. And Mr. John, you are here today. Uh, you've had one for a week or two, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, just over a week. And um, been getting on well with it. It's been my first proper Boss Multi Effects thing. Like everyone's had Boss pedals, you know, uh, even me, who has been mostly even digital you. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I've gotten really well with it. I've made a few patches, but just, you know, headline stats on, you know, headlines, I guess, is that it's Boss's entry onto the world of touchscreens. So, um, obviously here, you can see it's similar size to the ones that weren't touchscreen in previous mm -hmm. Boss units, but um, now it's friendly for all those people who are used to this interface and, you know, touchscreens everywhere from like your central heating to your, you know, music nowadays. So um, everyone is probably used to them by now, uh, or they should be at least. So. Um, I didn't realise Android robots needed central heating, John. I mean, <laughs> yeah. can't, don't you just self-regulate? I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, okay, sorry, I, c carry on. Oh, okay, <laughs> um, so as I've said that, it, you can do it with a touchscreen. That is one of the main new features of this product, but for dials, just like on Boss products, it's not going to be like completely new uncharted territory for people who are used to you know, Boss hands-on dials and tactile stuff. Um, it does look quite buttony up here, but it's really simple at the end of the day, and we can go through those in a bit. Um, and you've got different pages. You can go from the far left, oh, sorry, far left is a tuner, but you've got patch code or patch name, init memory, because it's like in for it. the kids. Yeah, init. It's initial. Um, um, and then along, you can it. just see, you've got um, <laughs> your, uh, what your foot pedals are doing. We'll go over that in a bit as well, in nice boss colors. So boost is yellow, chorus is nice cyan blue. All Can I ask stuff. a question already, Mr. John? Go for it. What's the difference between GX100 and GT1000? The basic difference is that there's a different processor. So um, this has a 24-bit processor, mm -hmm. and the GT1000 has a 32-bit processor, which, uh, you know, in layman's terms means that the GT1000 is technically faster and more powerful, I guess, in terms of computing standards. But really, I don't know it's a difference in that sort of stuff, because I, I would just, I never really max out these. But like you can probably max it out if you, yeah. if you are David Gilmour using it. So, the, so these, the, the commonality between the two is, is the, 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 the technology or the engineering, I suppose, that Boss use for AMP modeling in uh, GT1000 and GX100 is the same. It's this AIRD, AIRD. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess, uh, yeah, and then the processor will just, I suppose, you know, with more processing power becomes the ability to maybe, you know, fine tune and get additional detail and stuff and, and chain more effects. Up. Yeah, so, so um, Boss have this dynamic assign thing, which sounds very fancy, but it essentially means you can do whatever you want, how many times you want. So with modelers in the past, you may only be able to have a delay and mm. a reverb, but now you can chain them, have as many as you want, DSP depending, obviously, but um, I think it's up to 15 different inserts, mm -hmm. which is quite a lot, mm. really. Um, and again, 24-bit processor, which is powerful enough to do what you would probably want and more. So, so you're hearing this demo uh, guitar into the GX100 straight into our desk. I don't know if you guys have caught the um, Ampero 2 video that, that John and I have done, uh, but basically we've also got some real amplifiers in the room now plugged into the Boss Tube Amp Expander. And so what we'll do at different points in the, in the video is go, oh, I wonder how similar it actually really sounds to real amplifiers. Mm. So stay tuned for that. Um, as you say, this is Boss's first um, 
touch screen. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to jump right in with a criticism straight away. It's, I, I used to find anything where you're using a computer screen with a Boss product, you know, you've perhaps, the Tube Amp Expander is a great example. It looks so behind the times in terms of its graphical interface. I mean, it's, the functionality is there, but it's not mm. intuitive in the way sort of, you know, if you're used to using an iPhone and stuff like that, it's not intuitive. Right. When I first saw the touch screen on this, I was like, oh yeah, excellent. I'm excited about the fact that they've done a touch screen. But it's almost, again, it, yeah, it, it so feels a bit- You need bit, to go in that, and then you've got this sort of Yeah, layer it's, like, it's like Boss going, well, okay, we'll give you a touch screen, but it's still going to look like a touch screen from 1987, which I should probably like in fairness. But it, it, it's not, you know, I, I'm used to, not used to, but, you know, I think when you look at stuff like Headrush and what they're doing with touch screen, where you've got all the little graphics and yeah. things that look like pedals and amps and all that kind of stuff, it's really intuitive. This still feels to me a bit like, Ugh, you could have done better. But hey, let's get the negative out of the way, early doors, and let's just focus on, um, you know, what does it sound like and how simple is it to use? Absolutely. So can we do some, can we go through maybe, you know, three or four preset patches of just yes. get a flavor and then we'll dive into, you know, knobs and buttons and stuff? So um, this first one I've made uh, is called Dual Cleans. Mm -hmm. uh, and the nice thing about this interface is that it's built off two amps quite a lot of the time. So this control switch, C1, is naturally um, programmed with the unit to switch between the two. Mm -hmm. So for this one, I've got at the top a boutique style amp. Mm -hmm. Make of that what you will. Um, oh, hang on. Volume oh, down. I apologize, <laughs> yes. And chorus on. I'll turn that off. Time being. Perfectly good. Yep. Um, on the other one, I've then got a natural amp, so sort of more transparent. So you could see that as like your clean, super clean, acoustic-ish. Mm -hmm. Bit more. Y are you um, seeing this almost like a channel switch button? Are you? Right. Rather so, than, but but it's actually switching between two amps rather than between yeah. two channels. So that's quite a powerful feature, really, because sometimes you have to commit to an amp if you're in a you know analog mm -hmm. rig and all that sort of thing. But on the um, boutique amp, I've got a overdrive in front of it, right in yellow, as you know. And then you can instantly go from that to the chain before with the compressor in front of it, so you can really personalize it to what you would like. So the routing for the switches, I see what you've done there. You, you, this is now, oh, I see. So the compressor is always on for on the natural, the natural amp. amp, if you want it to be, and mm -hmm. the overdrive is, is on a, um, a foot switch like yeah. a regular pedal would be. Cool. Um, noise gate, and then this divider, uh, sorry, I'll go in effects. If you click the divider, you can see at the minute it's going between one or the other. Mm -hmm. You've got these four parameters will adjust whatever you're on. So if I go on the divider here, mm -hmm. single, dual, means it goes through both at once. Okay. And then at the minute, that will go through stereo, so they're both going through the same output. But if I then do pan left and right, um, right. the top one will go left, but I'm on right. I can really only hear this one. You can probably yep. hear the other one a bit better. Yep. But then when you add your um, space echo or chorus, that should be going through both either side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's where the power of this comes in that you don't really see in that change. Yeah, yeah. But I think the effects do sound great. I don't have a, to be fair, I don't, um, nothing, no real criticism or dislike of the, the tone of it yet. It's, it's mm. a nice sounding a unit. I don't know what I've gone for. Oh, play on the end. Mm. It sounds lovely, you know. How are the, so let's, I, th I think effects wise, Boss have a terrific reputation for effects and we know there are literally dozens and dozens. Is there a hundred different effects in here or something? There like? are a hundred and thirty <laughs> different effects. Okay. Yeah. So and, and in true boss style, I imagine, you know, you'll have tons and tons of your basic reverbs and delays and choruses and then it'll get into all the weird, 
you know, slicers and all, you know, all the unusual envelope filter pedals and synth pedals that, that uh, you know, Boss would have made over the years. But let's just focus in on the amps for the minute, because sure. the, the whole point, I think, with these boards now is it, it's to replace your amplifier. It is to use in a gigging uh, or recording capacity as a here you are sound man, here's your sound and off mm. we go. So it didn't have tons of amps in it from, from memory, did it? How, no. how many? So if I just go on the init patch and go on amp natural. So this will control what amp you're on. Mm -hmm. So far left transparent, natural, boutique, supreme. You can guess what some of these are. X Juggernaut. The X ones, just like the um, effects inserts, uh, I'll say that they're the uh, ones that sort of react to your playing. Right, okay. Um, and are a bit more intuitive and you know, more forward thinking. X high gain, mm -hmm. X modded, JC120, twin combo, Jilux, tweed, diamond, Brit, Recti. Oh, do you know what, there's more than I thought then. So what is it, like 20 different ones there? And or a something? Bug, 23 I think. 23, cool. And then, um, well we'll have a little listen to those as well, but is the cabinet an integral part, the speaker and the cabinet an integral part of the amp or is that broken out into a separate yeah, uh, block? Yeah, good question. It's kind of hard to see. It took me a while to see it, but if you look there, you can see a sort of, that you do have pages to each of these. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So this page would go along, so you've got, and these are specific to each amp. Yeah, I well. see. So you got your, John's talking about the five little dots at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, there, you yeah. may not be able to see that on the yeah. camera, but um, if you go right to the end, mm -hmm. you'll see that there's a direct mix. Uh-huh. So if at zero, that means that there's no direct amp head signal. It's going through a cab. But if I you understand. Then, oh, so way, what, the idea to what, split it out almost to give you a... Then that's just the amp head with no cab. So, but, so if we assume that, I mean, that's presumably for somebody that wants to run it through a separate... Um, Power amp and cab. Yeah, but if you, uh, if you wanted to use the speaker, so you've got original... Oh, I see. So you've got basically... Oh, and then a load of users. So you, yeah. you, you don't have tons of... What have you got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're into bass cabinets now, aren't we? So we've got like seven or eight guitar cabinets, then some bass cabinets, and then users. So users, what, to load in your own IRs? Own IRs, yeah. All right, but if we go with original, mm -hmm. um, that was something that we didn't think the Ampero did, but it obviously pairs the correct yes. speaker for that amp. So you mm -hmm. don't have to worry about that. Okay, well, that's good. What I really wanted to then hear was, you know, could we just, if we've just got basically a, a tone with some reverb on it, mm -hmm. could we just literally flick through some of these different amp types, get an idea of their sounds, so. Let's go. It's a natural amp. Actually, good opportunity for the tuner. <laughs> um, it does have a polyphonic tuner. Oh, which wow. is handy, if you want. So you can see my low E is a little flat there, but you can fine tune it and just do one at a time if you want. That'll do. Yeah, that's nice. You know what we should do? I've just come to the one called Deluxe Combo, uh, and I sort of feel like whilst we're here, um, maybe. So what have we? We've got you've got no effects. You've just got it going through Deluxe. There is a noise uh, suppressor on, which actually we can presumably just switch off. Uh, and then over here we've got just reverb, which is set to hall. So probably we can just change that to spring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always think it's a good sign. That oh, he says fun. except there isn't one. Uh, okay, well, we'll just go hall. Let's have a look. Um, or you think there might be a different kind? Oh, yeah, these are studio reverbs. I wonder if there are. So if you go over to. Aha. Oh, sorry. See, I, again, just looking at this, I, I sort of feel like this is. And then what you do? You like really old fashioned -y graphics, aren't they? You would drag it. He says. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me just take this one off. Hang on. This was the moment that uh, John realised that he had to kick back against uh, <laughs> digital. Uh, what was the what was the company called? Skynet. Yeah, this is when John realised that he had to kick back against Skynet. 
but it's still got the same. Ah, there we go. It was in. It was in the plus. There we go. Right. Just want to double, triple check. We've got nothing else switched on. Uh, reverb is now set to a spring reverb, which is good, and the uh, speaker is saying original type, which I assume will be just like a one by twelve. And over here, if I remember rightly, we need rig two and set like that from memory. In fact, let's just do a quick uh, one fender, one boss. Need a bit more reverb, don't we? But mm. that's fine, or a bit, uh, we need a bit more on one or a bit less on the other, but that's okay, we'll have a bit more. There's nothing wrong with more reverb. I must admit, in, immediately or initially, it's like, it just sounds like we're hearing the same thing. Mm. So, okay, so so bear with, bear with. Uh, please, John, play naturally, something beautiful and nice and Fender appropriate, so. I like the reverb on the Fender amp better, but I wonder yeah. if that's just a question of finding a different reverb on, on, on the Boss to, to pair up with it rather than using the spring reverb, but... They felt similar. The basic tone of it is, is frighteningly similar. It's got the similar. essence, that's the legal way of saying it's very close. What about when you start, you know, di you know dig in, yeah, play sure. some heavy funk stuff, I don't know, just give, yeah. get those dynamics and just see. <laughs> Turn the reverb down on the Fender. It's a bit. Oh. It's a little bit overbearing, isn't it? Oh my, oh my goodness me! <laughs> that would be Don't an you have arms form. that just like, extend yeah, into like forgot my titanium. extendo arms today? Sorry. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> rubbish. Okay. I now have an yes. extended arm after that. <laughs> feel different? It doesn't really sound that different, does it? So... No, mate, hang on. They're both super, super close. Yeah. yeah. Fine. Okay, well look, there's a win for the, uh, for the um, GX100. I'm just going to change this reverb back to just like a plate reverb, I think, mm -hmm. and then we'll start, go through the rest of the amplifiers. Uh, how much reverb? We've got too much reverb, or is it about right now? That's nice, yeah. Oh, it's loads. There's a man after my own heart. Uh, that's a good, that, I prefer the plate reverb. I think the plate reverb sounds more like the spring reverb in the Fender, but hey! Yeah. Hey diddly who? Uh, tweed combos. Vox, or diamond. Mm -hmm. is. Wacky, but there mm -hmm. you go. Rep <laughs> Matchless. Why spend five thousand pounds on an amp when you can just have a Boss GX one hundred? <laughs> Boogies. Oh, yeah. Orange. Bogna Uber Metal. So scooped. Oh, I'm gutted. There's no 5150. What are we going to compare our 5150 to? Uh, a, 
Uh, oh, unless we use one of the one of their own like X high gain, was that? No. I think that's like a Friedman-ish. Is it? Yeah. It's probably gonna be the Bogner, isn't it? You think so? And then with more mids. Okay, let's try that. Bogner with more mid range. Uh well, you fiddle around and get a tone okay. out of that, I'll fiddle around over here. Like 5150 classic. 5150 yeah. kind of vibe. Okay, so the green one is, is our 5150. We're using the, the blue channel with the gain about halfway up, and we're using um, a 412 vintage 30 loaded speaker in the, from the tube amp expander. And you decide, I mean, I said, this is not designed to be a, a, a model of a 5150, but it's a, you know, another sort of high gain classic amplifier. Let's, you play and let's see. It's a shame there isn't an exact one because the, you know yeah. there is a difference in the way the two amps yeah. sound. Uh, let's just turn the noise suppressor on here. Um, but I kind of feel like had there been a 5150 amp, it probably would have captured it reasonably faithfully. You know, they're sort of... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Boss have had plenty of time with every single thing on the planet at this point. And like the Fender one was pretty close, wasn't it? So the, Fender one was, the Fender one was closer, I think, than the... Ampero got to the agree, Deluxe yeah, yeah. until we found a different setting on the Ampero. Yeah. So this amp but, anyway. Yeah, but the, the uh, oh man, I mean it's, anyway, let's sort of, uh, what else we want to do? Let, let's maybe just again, perhaps we can revisit some of the presets and maybe find some of the more crazier ones as well to go through. Mm -hmm. um, but that was your, that was a quick run through of all the different amp models that were in here. Yeah, so uh, I just made another one purely for uh, an example of like, how different you could get each one. So this one I've called Daft Velcro. Right. And we'll, we'll see why in a minute. But uh, basically, again, I've got two amps set up. Top one is a like rolling jazz chorus with a fuzz. Oh, sorry. There we go. Yes. And it's got that Velcro -y yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, Like nailed, I think. Again, in front of that, you could put the X overdrive, which is just going to be more. And it does that sort of flubby. Like, if you know, all the little nuances that come out do. That's a bit much. But um, then on the other one, uh, I've got a boutique amp with a T-Wire, which is basically an envelope filter of mouth. And I'm an absolute sucker for those. And this one, you know that um, the Gaia Tone wire yeah, yeah. rocker, the one that Guthrie made, really right. famous. Sort of feels like it sounds like that. I've never owned one, but it's the closest to like that really nice feeling one. Yeah. Is this C1 control? I mean, you're yeah. using it to, to to flip an amp from one side to the other. Uh -huh. um, what what's the point of? Um, and I, I assume the C1 can kind of do anything you want it to do, right? Any, just any of these can be programmed to do anything. Right. So is there a point to, do, to, to making those changes inside of a patch rather than going from one patch to the next? Is it, is it a, the speed that it loads or to do with trails or just using up less patches? Or, is, you know, or do you just like the fact, do you think it's just more convenient to be able to just you know, stay within the same patch and just change one small thing. I think it depends like how complex you want your sounds to be. Like back in the days when I would use like a really simple mother, I'd have like clean crunch mm. rhythm distortion. But nowadays like they've got into the processing power where you can sort of have pedal boards and scenes mm -hmm. within a patch. And I think for the guys who, or girls, who like, you know, pedal boards and are used to that format, this sort of makes more sense to have pedals in a sort of spon spontaneous mix and match fashion. Mm -hmm. But if you are a preset guy and just want boom, 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 boom. Um, and then for the people who do want to change between that mid song, maybe as well, 
um, you get between that by holding this C2. Right, so that's going between its memory mode and its effectively like its stomp yeah. mode, isn't and it? And then if all hell breaks loose, you just want to see your preset name, exit button, very handy, I think. And then um, <laughs> one, two, three, four. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, what else do we want to say? Or is there, that doesn't feel like a great deal. Perhaps we have a quick look at ins and outs and mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, so we now have mono input, stereo output, headphones, send and return with a ground lift. Uh, a couple of options here for, oh, I see, yeah, okay, so you, these are control functions here, so you could, if you really wanted to, mm. you could hook one of these up to the channel switching input yes. on your amplifier, yeah. do your channel switching on your amp, if you wanted to use this with a traditional guitar amp, or this is where you'd put additional switches or um, expression pedals to do more functionality. Mm -hmm. Full MIDI in and out, yep. uh, a an optional Bluetooth, um, what would you call that? Transmitter, I suppose. Yep. Um, so you can use the app to change your sound or the Tone Studio desktop editor as well. Yeah. Or stream music, I think. As well. Uh, yeah. What else? You got? You've got ye old fashioned uh, HP printer USB socket over here. Yep. It's very sturdy, isn't it? I mean, it's to a certain degree, yeah. I think, with Boss stuff, you know. In fact, there's an interesting video. If you stay tuned, um, John and I are going to mess around with a really old Boss uh, ME5 unit, but I think you know when you buy Boss stuff, it's very rare that you replace it because it stops working. You know, you yeah. would normally just replace it when you feel like there's a an upgraded version a few years right. down the line that you just want more. Um, a few other little things. Oh, go um, on. Yes, just occurred to me. Um, again, idiot check. Like myself, I would need this clumsy feet. These are quite close to probably your most used button. Mm -hmm. If you hold the, edit, the exit, it will then lock this so you can't be an idiot and change your settings mid-track. And it will tell you you're being an idiot yeah. as well. Um, that's great. And you just hold it, and I believe unlocked. Um, next thing, in this initial patch, as you saw, it doesn't quite look like an initial patch because there's tons on it, right? Mm -hmm. But it's because it automatically has this volume pedal and wah in the chain. So in every patch, that's always assigned. Understood. Um, and other little things, like if you're a desktop guitar player, and you, you're going to use this as like a modeling thing on your desk, um, even though we're sort of pressing it in a bit, you can adjust sensitivity. Let's hear the wah. That. I always kind of, I mean, wahs are again digitally so difficult. Sorry. No, go on, you play them. It sounds like a wah, wah Feels good. Fair play. Before we play out on a funky patch of your choosing, is there anything else that you need to tell us about the GX100? Um, not really, other than like you can, we haven't talked about assigning things to pedals, but um, you do that through menus and it, once you get your head around the, the sort of process of it, it's very straightforward. And that's how I managed to do these four patches and assign these to various foot switches and stuff. But. So I suppose then, Lastly, it's uh, we think it's going to be about 500 quid. Dive over to the Anderson's website, links below to, to get the latest um, confirmed pricing. It's obviously out in February, uh, I believe it's February 2022. Mm -hmm. There's not a massive amount of competition anymore. It, it, it feels to me like the, this is almost quite a timely addition from Boss because right. if you've got 800 quid to spend, you know, you can look at the GT1000. Uh, you could look at uh, the, the, the Helix LT, you could look at the Head Rush. Um, you're not quite into QC or, or, or Kemper territory yeah. by that point, but there's plenty of choice. And if you go downwards, you've got, you know, all sorts of Zoom and Moore and Ampero things around about the sort of 300 quid. Mm. But at 500 pounds, what tends to be sitting around this price bracket are the are the units that have gone let's let's take lots of processing and powerful stuff but not give you any foot switches or expression pedals yeah. so you know ampero 2 hx stomp, stomp yeah. even gt1 e even gt core which is still a little bit dearer than that so i, yeah. I wonder if it's almost i know that the zoom g11 is about the only one that i can think of that's got you know lots of switches and an expression pedal in that sort of same price bracket but have you, what are your, you know, what's your general impression and sense of, oh, Line 6 Pod Go, maybe the yeah. wireless version would come up against this price-wise? I mean, for me, I think this sort of sits where Boss Pedals do in the pedal world, because, like, everyone knows that Boss Pedals, like, 
for a reason because they're very accessible. They're not the most expensive, but they do a lot. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, this isn't the most expensive Morph FX, but it also does a lot. So it sort of sits in the modeler world where it, the pedals do. Like the pedals are great in their own right, as you know, some of these sounds feel great, just like really expensive bits of kit. But um, it's accessible and it's, you know, for people who do want that touchscreen interface, this is Boss's entry into that world where you can do everything and have that Boss tech. Um, yeah. So really then we're giving it a general thumbs up, sounds good, yeah. sensibly priced, great, you know, easily giggable because of all the switching options and the built-in expression pedal. Mm -hmm. Do we just give it a slight, you know, sort of, you know, doesn't give it the full 10 out of 10 because the touch screen still looks a bit dated? Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it hasn't got the biggest touch screen either, which I guess is maybe mm -hmm. frustrating. Like, you know, yeah. Helix and Quad Cortex, I think, have the biggest touch screen. Yeah. Um, but again, you may be a hands-on, like people who use boss pedals like their dials. So you may want to be more of a dial front edge because you can, again, use all the dials and in the same way, so. No worries. It's up to you. All right, cool. In that case then, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, we'll find a funky patch for John to, to jam out on, noodle out on. And um, yes, please like and subscribe these videos. Hopefully they're helping you make better decisions about what gear you might like to purchase. And of course, when you have decided what you'd like to purchase, please purchase it from this fine emporium here for which you will find links below this video. Uh, and John and I will see you in another video soon. Au revoir. <laughs> <laughs>